So we're going to start talking a little bit about um, homeschooling through high school. If I could have you guys briefly um, just give your backgrounds and um, why uh, why I would ask you to be part of the panel, I guess, uh, regarding high school. Uh, Kristen? Um, well, I have graduated uh, five so far, and all of my uh, graduates seem to be doing pretty well in life and, um, you know, in their careers and with the Lord and all those fundamental things, not that they don't have their struggles because they certainly do. They've, you know, they've each experienced, I wouldn't say a crisis of faith, but hard things in life that they've, that has tested their faith. Um, they've had to learn things, uh, in their, as husbands and wives and parents, and they've had to learn things as employees and, you know, all that sort of things, just like we all do. Um, but all things considered, I feel that they're, they're all doing quite well and I'm proud of them. And so I've gone through this process five times we are heading into a high school where three out of my four into that high school into school, our new school year, three out of my four students are um, going to be high school students. And I also have a seventh grader. My youngest is in seventh. So I've been at this quite a while, not to mention the experience that I've had with evaluating curriculum, uh, uh, being a chapter leader of our local homeschool group, and then and we also owned a business that sold curriculum. So I've had a lot of experience with high school curriculum and also guiding people with high school students. Good. Rachel? Well, I first began with high school as a high school English teacher for about 15 years doing that. My master's degree is school administration. So when I actually pulled out of traditional school and began homeschooling, I saw a need in my community for a cover school and a co-op. And so I thought, you know, I'll, I want this for my own children. So I'll start doing that. And it grew from 23 kids to 198 children enrolled in that. Um, and so with that, I did transcripts and never dreamed I'd use that master's degree in school administration to help homeschool families. <laughs> but that's how it is. So many just six years of helping all the other families through their high school transcripts and getting their students accepted into colleges. And then now I also have two high school graduates myself. Um, one is a junior in college and then one is will be a sophomore. And so they are both very successful college students, did very well on college entrance exams um, and just have really been amazing in their college years just even in their standing firm I have one in California and I had one that was in Florida and has now transferred to another school but um both just really exceeded my second daughter actually finished high school a year early and took many of the tests to get into college as far as that her school offered where you could test out of subjects and she actually tested out of her first three um, English classes at the college level. Both of the girls did well enough on their um, ACT college entrance exams that they did not have to take any math courses at the college level. And so I just am very proud of two successful college students that I have. Awesome. Jessica. <laughs> what is so funny? Why are you laughing? <laughs> As a minute I said, if everybody could announce themselves and why I'd have me part of the panel, I saw your eyes do the flash. <laughs> and then I was thinking to myself, okay, let me go through my history here. <laughs> okay, so I am one of seven children that grew up in, in uh, my siblings and I, there were seven of us. Five of us graduated um, being homeschooled. So I was homeschooled from fifth grade through 12th grade. Um, I began teaching. I taught for seven years. Most of my teaching experience was with middle school, but I did teach high school for one year. Um, in addition to that, uh, I work with um, families that are using masterbooks every single day. 
and I assist families with their high school questions and things. Um, so I am not homeschooling a high schooler yet. My oldest that I'm homeschooling is in seventh grade. Um, actually, my oldest stepdaughter uh, graduated high school last year, but that was through the public school system. So I do have some experience with credits and things like that, even from that side of things. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my high school. I've been a homeschooled high school student. I've taught high school. Um, I have a child that's gone through the public school in high school, so. Good. Yeah, I think you can't help but um, be part of a community of 34,000 homeschool moms. And for how many years now? Four years? Three years? Four years? Over three. Yeah, and, and how many countless conversations about high school books, accreditation credits, without gaining a lot of knowledge. And so um, I thought this would be a really valuable conversation to have. Myself, of course, I'm married to Kristen. That gives me credibility. Number two is my story is a scrappy story in that I was not a very good student. I transferred from public school into a private school. The private school did testing for learning gaps. And in eighth grade, they put me back to a fifth grade level in core subjects. And my high school, um, I didn't enjoy school at all. I enjoyed learning, but I didn't enjoy school. But I was able to go from that school to graduate, to go to a community college, then to work with a company that paid for me to go into an executive program and get a four-year degree in marketing. And, um, and so I am proof that even students who may not enjoy schooling and may not be necessarily the stellar student can absolutely be successful in the field or the career that the Lord has called them to. And it, school isn't indicative. Uh, like it's, we sometimes make school a God, right? And I think even today, we have to be very careful of that because kids are going to school because that's this big thing. And many are losing their faith. And also many are graduating and not finding jobs because they don't have the life skills that are needed to transfer into a career. And so I think we have to always look when we're looking at homeschooling through high school, a little bit is we look at the individual student, right? And then we have to look at what are the end goals. And so um, I found amazingly, like when I, like somebody will ask me a question and I'll say, well, what college do you want them to go to? And that's like the, the starting point for if they want them to go to college, I go there. If they want them to go into, if the kids are interested in a career, then go there and see what are the job requirements for the positions that they're interested in, or what are the, the admission requirements? Um, how would you go about that? Well, like, what would be your advice to my kids are in seventh grade, I'm getting ready to, to prepare them for the high school. Uh, you know, what would be your starting point? Kristen, I'll start with you. Well, you know, when we, when our kids were, were young, to me, college was just going to be a given. Uh, it wasn't even a question. And the Lord really had to change my heart on that. Um, and so our, our family's personal approach to it all is college is no longer an absolute given. And what we actually advise our students as they're getting older is, is to, if they want to go to college, that's okay. I mean, there's a lot of discussions that we have to have, but the first discussion is don't take on debt just because there's just so many kids that are coming out, like Randy said, and they've paid all this money and they, they're working at McDonald's. I can't tell you how many cases we have seen of that, especially in the last, what, five, 10 years, that's been more problematic. So that's our first thing. Um, we, you know, we, my oldest daughter did go on to college um, and, and we told stories about that before, about how she, you know, wouldn't write for me, but gave us such a hard time. But then her her professors were, would say, what a wonderful writer she was. Um, 
And so, you know, that again is an encouragement that if you're, if you're fear, feeling fearful or frustrated with a kid not really given their best work, it's okay. You know, they, they can become successful adults. Uh, so I just want to throw that in there really quick. But um, I have one son that went more the, the root of the trades and he got certifications and a lot of things. So he did continue his education, but in a slightly different way. Now he's down the road um, a ways in his career. And he's finding that in order to get to the next step, he probably is going to need a college degree. And so he recently enrolled. And that's the track that Randy took. Only you got your two year before yeah, what's the what's the what's it called? Is it a transition year? What's that called? The year yeah, that they kind of take off, take off. Yeah, sometimes kids will take take a year off before going into college. Um, so there's just a lot of different things that they can do, and so now I don't take the hard and fast. You're going to college, and that's that. Um, they we have found that our kids can be very very successful in life you know, they can rise up pretty quickly and do great things with or without a degree. And if they need a degree, they can always go and, and get that education when it's needed, if they decide to postpone it. Um, so that's the first thing that we, you know, just don't go into debt. The second thing, and probably the you know, we just have to get that out of the way first, but more importantly, it's really important to us that our kids not lose their faith in college, because what good does it do if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Mm -hmm. So that is extremely important. And so we want to be really careful in our family to make sure that any college that they're considering is going to teach from a foundation. And then once they do start college, really keeping an eye, asking questions, seeing what the curriculum looks like. You know, our daughter went to a Christian college, but they use secular textbooks. So, you know, we just had discussions about it. So even, you know, realizing that each individual professor and the textbooks that they use use can still counter the word of God. So staying vigilant. So that's our approach as they're going into high school. What I prefer to do is to create a, a transcript plan. So I go to Homeschool Legal Defense Association. They have a guideline for three different types of high school diplomas. So I put most of our children um, so far, all but our, our son that has special needs, um, they all graduate with a college bound diploma. That way, if down the road, they decide that they want to go to college, they still have the courses that they would need to go to college. So that's my preference. I'm kind of wrestling through right now. The next one to graduate really doesn't want to take, you know, I'm just going to, you know, spell it out, be real here. Our kids have always taken the SATs and he really isn't interested in taking the ACTs or the SATs. And between COVID and our move and all this craziness, we hadn't, usually they'll take the PSATs, then they'll take the SATs and then they'll take the SATs one more time. That's our usual track, but we didn't take that track with him. And he just doesn't want to take these tests and he doesn't plan on going to college. So we have to investigate that further and see, well, what happens if he doesn't and he wants to go to college down the road? Is that going to be a problem? So that's a question that we've had that we've never had to face before. And so we have to do that immediately and just look into that. So that's that's what we do. I do a lot of planning to make sure that we're going to fulfill all the requirements of that transcript and whatever they're interested in, we just want to make sure that they've taken the courses that they're going to need to, to do those things. But God has a way of changing our plans dramatically. He certainly has changed mine. And so we all always have to keep in mind that we're not God and we have to seek him and we have to seek him with our kids and we have to teach our kids to seek him for the plans that not that we have for them but that he has for them and that always has 
to be front and center as we're thinking about these things. So that's awesome. Rachel, in the admission process, Kristen mentioned what can happen. I know um, you did an umbrella, you were kind of an umbrella school in when you were in, in your other location. And um, there's a lot of ways that students can get into college. Like one is the traditional admissions and, and taking a ACT or SATs and uh, all of that, but there are other tracks, right? Yes, um, I always recommend, even when I'm helping other families and even with my own children, I recommend contacting the possible choices of colleges that your child might want to attend and see what their different options are. Um, I, I have two that I've already graduated. My third one is a junior this year. And one of the options for him with his college, he'd you know, had a few colleges, had kind of narrowed it down to this one specific one. And one of the options with him was like an early dual enrollment to get started on some classes as a junior year. So, um, so he is this year taking some basic, you know, a Bible course and a computer course and things like that to go ahead. And so we've already done like a full application process, but it's going to make his entrance into college and at that particular college much easier that we've already started. And other many other families that I've worked with have done that as well. So even contacting those colleges and seeing what early admission processes they have, many Christian colleges definitely offer that and they love homeschooling students. <laughs> um, and so that has been the case that I have found is whenever, because as an, the umbrella school, as the administrator, they were thrilled when they called and they found out this was actually a homeschooling student coming in. Um, so actually the doors to me for homeschooling students, even beyond taking an SAT and before taking an ACT, um, the doors were open and they were very welcoming for homeschooling communities. And before they ever saw a transcript, before they ever saw an ACT. That's been my personal experience with that. And then um, definitely just if your child has a specific college they want to go to or a specific course of study, going ahead and looking into that and seeing what courses are required. And as Kristen said, starting early and laying that plan out from the beginning, um, looking at HSLDA and see what they recommend for that college bound student. My second daughter that I talked about, um, she had this plan all along, actually went her first year, last year, um, graphic design, advertising and graphic design. That'd been her plan all along. And she comes home this year at the end of the school year, the end of the first freshman year, and tells us she's changing to pre-med physical therapy. And that is, <laughs> we, I mean, came out of the blue. But I was so thankful that we actually made those, like, like transferring to a totally different school all that. but even in that I'm thankful that we did a college bound transcript with that so she has biology with lab chemistry with lab we did the advanced pre-med from master books um and the the biology with master books the um chemistry with master books so I'm thankful that she had those things already because now out of the blue she's decided she's going into pre-med um so those that would be my just cover all the bases, talk with your, talk with your children, but then also keep in mind, as Kristen said, the Lord may lead them in a different direction. And so I'm very thankful that I followed that college track suggested by those that know best like HSLDA and keeping in contact with those colleges and did that. But yeah, they definitely have plenty of opportunities and early enrollment chances. You just want to talk with the different colleges, just call them. They love to talk to homeschool parents. Yeah, I, a lot of colleges recruit because the depth, they just make better students is what I've been told. And so people, the colleges really enjoy them. Yeah, and, and even our son that just, you know, just uh, enrolled into college, he had no problem with the high school. The only thing that he did was contact me and say, mom, do you still have a copy of my transcript? Because he's always losing his copy. So I do suggest that you hang on to a copy, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. multiple <laughs> copies of their transcripts so that when, you know, they do need to get in, if it's a delayed, like our son, that you can give it to them. But yeah, they were they welcomed him. Mm -hmm. Master Books even... does have the cumulative record, which we highly recommend that has transcript. At least it's yes. a sample. So you may do it a little bit differently or use a spreadsheet or something of that nature. Um, but I, I agree. It's good to take their transcript and put it in a safe 
and keep it. Uh, I was, I had the opportunity to pastor a church that had a school and the school had closed, but we still had the obligation to keep transcript records that were 30 to 40 years old because somebody transfers careers or they go into the military or they need to do an adoption and they needed their diploma. And so we would have to provide their transcripts. So definitely I would agree. Jessica, could you speak on the issue of accreditation? Because I know sometimes there's confusion about curriculum being accredited. Yeah, so um, curriculum cannot be accredited. Um, schools can go through an accreditation process. And it seems to me that a lot of times you'll hear the word accredited thrown around by schools that are accredited because they want to make that sound like that's like this really special thing. But I think something to understand about accreditation is this, is that it simply means that there is an organization that has a set of standards and whatever school is accredited through that organization, they have applied and they have paid to meet those set of standards. That's what accreditation means. So when a school says that they're accredited, okay, well, they're accredited with what organizations? And what exactly does that mean? Because schools can be accredited with different organizations. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you don't need to be accredited to go to college. You don't need to go through an accredited school. Public schools are often not accredited. Um, charter schools are often not. So it seems like it's a word that specifically a lot of private schools will throw around as if that kind of sets them apart. And now they are meeting the standards of whatever organization they're saying, if they are accredited, but it's not something that homeschoolers need to be really worried about. Um, if you are homeschooling and not going through some type of, there are some schools that you can go through as a homeschooler that would be, you know, have accreditation behind them, but that's not going to prevent you from getting into a college or something like that. That's typically not an issue. You as the homeschooler, you are able to create your own diploma, create your own transcripts, and that's not really a problem. So it just, it's kind of one of those things that people throw around, but a lot of times don't really understand what is behind it. So curriculum cannot be accredited, which means Masterbooks is not accredited. Now, there might be accredited schools that use Masterbooks, but I mean, that's pretty much how that works. Yeah, and I know that there are schools that have accreditation that use Masterbooks. Uh, they've told us that. Um, so, I, you know, right now I could start the National Association of Home Educators I could set a list of standards. Here's the top 10 standards. You do record keeping, make sure you brush your teeth every day, um, use a book, you know, teach 180 days of the school year, those type of things. If you meet the standards, then I could issue accreditation. I mean, that's essentially how it works. And mm -hmm. some colleges are accredited and won't accept, won't accept credits from other colleges that don't have certain accreditation. And, and so in college, if you're looking to transfer, it has a lot more weight. In homeschooling, um, I mean, we've never run into, if we had a transcript, that's all that's ever been required was a transcript. And um, I think in New York, Chris and our school district did like a letter of equivalent education. Yeah, that's something that New York, um, and it's only specific to New York. So this doesn't apply to other states. There may be other states that do this, but New York um, <coughs> changed their law at a certain point. And um, as long as you filed all the way through all four years of high school, all of the required paperwork, they would, because you're only required to until the student reached a certain age. And so technically you could stop filing all your paperwork at a certain point. But if you did it all four years, then you could request from your school district a letter of equivalent education. And so I well, don't know. Never, worth... Without a transcript, like nobody ever really requested it from us. And no, any I mean, I usually, if I, I always did it and then I would request it and they never gave me an issue with it. 
I threw it into their records, but I've never found it particularly helpful because it's not only New York does it. I mean, like I said, there could be some other states that do it, but it's not, there may not be any other states that do it. So and it's not really recognized. As far as diplomas go, I've never been asked in all, like I have the Forrest, Trump, Trump, Forrest Gump career path. So I've, I've worked all over the place. Well, my, my career path is a box of chocolates. And um, but I've never been asked for my high school diploma. I've been asked for if I was a graduate and I've been asked for my transcript, but never my diploma. Transcript is that one piece of paper document that, that seems to be most valuable. Right. Um, I have I have known of jobs that required a degree from an accredited college. But I think that those are very specific type situations. They're not, you know, across the board. And that's, I would say, if your child is interested, say, in, in physical therapy or being a graphic designer, go before you spend any money in college, go look at a couple of companies at their job postings and see what they want. Because sometimes it's five years of experience like there's such a thing called micro learning through courses like Udemy and different courses, which as a parent, you want to make sure that you're also watching, but you can train. I, I can get a really good education for like $14 from some of the micro learning centers that will bring me up to speed. Yep. In fact, one of our biggest marketing philosophies in master books that has worked extremely well cost me $15 at Udemy. And it was mind blowing and we applied it and boom, it worked. And I, I don't, I've been, I've, I've spent my time in college marketing classes and nobody ever talked about it. So I think sometimes you really want to know, like, what does the career require? We, with our oldest, we were headed down the route of, she wanted to be a missionary and, and she was looking at being a midwife, right? A doula or a midwife, one of those things. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she was going to start with a Bible college that had like a medical, um, a, a medical track. And just out of fluke, I called one of the ministry, like Samaritan's Purse and, or one of those and asked them. And they said, oh, you don't want the Bible college. Like she wouldn't be allowed into the countries that she would like to serve in if she went to Bible college. Let her learn a language or let her become a teacher or something like that. And we can plug her in immediately. So her whole idea of where she was going and how we were going to do it, like that's kind of where go to the end, know your destination and work, work that way. And then God had an entirely different plan for her. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> so she didn't even end up going on the missions field. But so, you he know, used her degree in education. Yes. To like, he knew, he knows God is so amazing. Cause he, we think, you know, scripture says a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps the Lord knew. And, and that's, that's all that really mattered. And sometimes when it comes to college and graduation and high school, I think we have to have some trust that the Lord is really directing our children uh, where he intends them to be. I need to get out of the way sometimes. Yes. Rachel, we didn't have you... to say that so emphatically. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Rachel, what would you say to the mom who isn't necessarily a very good record keeper who, you know, are coming in and it's really pretty important that you keep some records through high school. So what advice would you give to that mom? First of all, I would say it's, it's not as overwhelming as you think it is. It's, it's just not, it's really just step-by-step step, course by course, just writing down and recording what they're taking um and then you know just marking it down and that's one credit and okay make sure we have the four basic subjects covered okay we have english nine we we've done a language arts this year whether it was a literature or a grammar or you know a writing class we've done a language arts so we have an english nine <laughs> um, you do not have to a lot of parents get caught up in that they have to write down this full long course description and exactly what books they used and all of these things. And that's not necessary. Um, sure, there are some very specific college 
have some college degrees that are going to ask a little more information sometimes, but in the general, it's very easy. It's just step by step. They're in ninth grade this year. Let me just write down what course they they're taking and how many credits they're earning and then just starting that way. It's not some overwhelming process that you have to keep up with. And there's lots of support. Ask, ask. Your, those that are around you who have already gone that path and already have high school students. And HSLDA has a whole link for homeschooling through high school that they make it, I, I call it like, you know, they used to have long ago, those like windows for dummies <laughs> and that type of thing and Microsoft for dummies. It's kind of like that. I mean, they've given us the step-by-step -step process of how to make sure that we're doing, we're doing all right with our kids. Cause I know even for me, I, even I was, when you the first one is just the guinea pig I mean you just do <laughs> all kinds of things with the first one um, and you learn from those mistakes uh, but even for me and with my background I questioned myself constantly even in the beginning as well even though I was helping other families do it I was questioning what I was doing with my own kid and I think that's just mom just the mom side not that we we just worry we're messing up our kids when we're really not yeah I, I, th I would recommend for anybody watching to contact your school and get a copy of your transcript. Ask, ask them to send you a copy of the transcript so that you can even see this is the process that your student would go through. We have copies of our transcript from, from um, well, I took them before I left because I was pastoring at the school that we had, but um, uh, I want to make sure just in case I ever needed it to go back to preschool or something, I could have it, but the, uh, it's just a good process to have and to see this is what we needed was four years of math and four years of science and four years of English. And it was pretty simple. It was English. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it wasn't anything complicated or books. And then what grade I had. Okay. So Jessica, okay. So you grew up in a family that runs businesses. Your husband is in a trade that, and I think trades are so important right now because so few people are getting trained in trades. Um, I just spoke to our electrician this last week and he's like, he's booked out to October. And he said, if I could find just one young man who wanted to learn, I would hire him in a heartbeat and begin training him in the trade. Can you speak a little bit to that? Cause I know your family knows, like, you know that, like what would be required for, for someone coming out of school to work for your dad or to take the same track that your husband did? So a lot of times what companies are looking for is experience. That is going to trump pretty much anything else. A lot of times at this point, um, some people are wanting your two-year degree. Um, and so it's almost like if you get that, you're kind of like base level and you can kind of go any direction. So that degree is kind of just really a, like, it's really flexible for you. If you at least have that, you don't need to have like specific in something, but then there are trade schools. I mean, there are a ton of trade schools out there. If your child has a specific interest on a certain trade they want to go into, there's also some places that will let you come in on an entry level position. And, um, you know, it might not be like really great pay, but sometimes you can come in like right after high school or even sometimes even before your child graduates, if they know that they want to go into a specific trade, they could do like a ride along position where they're a helper and they can end up, you know, learning so much on the job. And a lot of times, if you look up, um, if you look up like job listings, it'll say, we want this degree and we want this experience. Like they have this list of things they want, but if you come to them and you say, Hey, I have six years of experience. I've, I've worked for this company that is, you know, down the street that, you know, is a reputable company. And you have this list of things you've done. A lot of times those requirements fly out the window. It's very interesting. Um, my husband does not have college, any college experience. He doesn't have a degree, but yet he holds um, positions, management positions where the people under him have several degrees because he has been on the job since he was a teenager. And so he has so much 
experience in the actual field that he has been put into positions that technically on paper, he's not supposed to have. But at the end of the day, the employer wants someone who can do the job, not someone who looks good on a piece of paper. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite book titles is Why uh, A Plus Students Work for C Minus Students. And uh, a lot of times the skills for management and those are different than the academic pursuits. And I think something that I would like to say, and then we'll get into answering some questions, is it's really important to teach your children that they are a brand, that their name means something. And so when they're out in the world and they're making friends, they're posting online, they're making relationships, connections, networking with older people, um, that everything that they're doing is building their brand. The way we dress, the way we hold ourselves, the language we use, the places we go, that's their brand. And as you go through life, um, it used to be where I would just find a company with a big brand and I would just merge into that and that would be who I am. It's not anymore. It's more like, um, if I could use a sports analogy, you have Tom Brady who plays football with New England Patriots and he's, he's a Pats and, 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 and he's great. But then that comes to an end and suddenly he transfers to Tampa. His brand transferred with him. He's a winner and he holds the people around him to a high level of accountability. And so as he goes to Tampa, he takes them to the Super Bowl and they win. And that's his brand. And he's very meticulous about his brand. Our kids need to be as well, that their integrity, their, the, their belief in the Lord, um, their faith, all of these things, they're building this brand. And so when they move into a career, it doesn't matter. I've encouraged my kids to take entry-level positions because if they have the right brand, it only takes them, just get your foot in the door. A manager is going to recognize that and move you up very quickly. I've watched my kids move into start at the bottom and move very quickly into positions just because they have a brand. There's a presence. There's, they're focused on that. They know that. When Brittany walks into a new opportunity recently, she, was, she, she knew, hold your shoulders back, stay big, stay present, you know, make eye contact, don't shrink, all of those things because she's worked on that being part of her brand. And so the academics is part of that, what we train for, the schooling is part of that, but character and is, is so big. And we can't do that for our kids. They have to understand that they need to bring that to the game. Like you can't rest on being my kid for very long before you have to step into your own brand. And most of my kids don't want to be part of my brand. They, they're looking forward to being part of their own brand, like as quickly as possible. So, uh, which is a good thing. That's the way it's supposed to be. If, if I'm, if as a parent, I'm, I, my bend is to try to keep them part of my brand. I feel that that's selfish. Like my legacy is to see my children succeed beyond me. And so that's, that's what I want. I want them to succeed beyond me, not to be limited by my insecurities and my, my caps. So, okay, so I'm gonna ask some questions. Jessica, what is the blue book behind you? Oh, this is God is Really, Really Real. This is one of my favorite books that Masterbooks has. So it's kind of like three parts in here. There's a story in the beginning. Let's see if I can show some of it. The story goes from like Adam and Eve all the way through to Jesus coming. And then it talks, it goes even further beyond that, where it talks about the church being established. It talks about communion and baptism. It's pretty much like the whole Christian story, right? In storybook form. But then after that, let's see here, after we get to this, after the story, we keep going and it goes into explaining um, 30 basic Christian doctrines. So like evangelical doctrines, and you can see that at the top, it says 30 easily taught Bible doctrines. So it breaks it down really easy for your kids to understand, um, marriage, holiness, God, the Holy spirit, um, communion, uh, baptism, good works, faith. I mean, it just goes through 30 of these. And then the third part after that, 
is it goes into additional helps for you as the parent. You can see how much text is here. This is broken down those 30 doctrines again, and it's giving you so much more information and scripture references so that way you can have a really full understanding of these doctrines and where they're based from. And then you can, you know, as you understand those, you can pass those on to your kids. So, I mean, this book, I think it's like 12 or $13, something like that on the website. It's pretty inexpensive and it is like full, full of information on doctrinal truth um, and where it's found in the word. So one of my favorite books. Yeah. And sometimes you can't judge a book by its cover. That's one of the books that the cover makes it look more basic. And, and while there's a story to it, there's a lot of depth and meat in that book as well. Okay. So. Um, I, I think I'm going to get two different angles, which is good. So Kristen, who is our curriculum development editor and brand manager, um, how is Masterbooks high school curriculum or your philosophy different from other homeschool curriculum? Um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, well, first of all, Masterbooks as a, as a company, we're eclectic. And so you have to understand the structure of the company as a whole and in, in our curriculum. So what we do is we have different authors and they may just have one course or they might have a whole series of core courses or we may be in mid development, like right now where faith grows is in development. And so we just have level one out, level two is being written um, and we're going to develop that course. But then we have, we have subjects that we offer multiple solutions to. And so, you know, you may like, you may look at our science and find that in the same grade, we have multiple options with all different authors. And so that's because we realize there, there is no one size fits all. And we want you to be able to choose the right path for your student, your situation. So understand that when you're looking at um, a high school plan, you're going to have to make some decisions. Um, it's not all just, oh, this is what we offer. It's the only thing you we offer. And if you're going to use master books, this is the track you have to take. That's how many curriculums, especially those that, that started off, which is, you know, any of the big box ones, they started off as solutions for Christian schools. And so we did not start off as a solution for Christian schools, even though we do have some Christian schools using our materials. We started off for homeschoolers. So we are designed specifically for homeschool needs. So you have to understand that when you're looking at our courses and you may find that a certain author resonates with a specific student more than another author. And so keep that in mind when you're picking um, out courses. So beyond that, um, we are very committed to staying to biblical standards. And so our, we require our authors to agree with our statement of faith. We focus on reading scripture exactly how it's said. Now there are doctrines that are debated among biblical denominations, people who hold to biblical truths. I'm not talking about those things. Those things we like to leave up to individual parents and families to explore together. I'm talking mainly about things like creation. So we hold to a young earth creation model. We hold that when God says he created in a day, that's what he meant. We have all sorts of scientific evidences uh, that we have materials that you can look into. Um, we feel that it's very important. It is the most important thing to prepare your children 
in the way they should go, which means with a foundation of scripture. And so we don't just slap a Bible verse onto our subjects. We actually start with the word of God. And some people look at us funny, like, how can you do that with things like math? Well, God is the one who created the laws that govern math. Now, I know that there's it's this new thing to say that there are no laws, even with math, that one plus one doesn't always equal two, but that's just nonsense. God created the laws of math. That's just it's like denying there's gravity. Well, something is holding us down onto the ground. Um, you know, things like that, that man has tried to re- define. It doesn't work. It's foolishness. And so every single thing that you study starts with God one way or another. And so that's reflected in our curriculum. And so our primary focus, no matter what the subject is, is to lead the student into a deeper understanding of the word of God and the earth that he created. And even scripture itself says that all of creation testifies to God, the God of the Bible, not the one that we create in our own head, which is another really popular thing in today's culture is to create our own God. Well, my God wouldn't. Well, your God isn't all that big now, is it? And you created it. It's an idol. And so we want to distinguish the God of the Bible is who we worship, is who we learn from. It's who created the world that we live in. And so we don't want to just have a lot of highly educated students. We want students to go beyond knowledge and have wisdom. And I'm concluding with that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. It looks like I'm in a cave. It must be it's going to storm here and my lights aren't on. And it's like, I'm watching just gets darker and darker and darker. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go to black pretty quick. Um, Rachel, how would you answer that? Well, for me and what I was choosing for my own home, first of all, absolutely. We were looking for a good biblical foundation, a very specific type of curriculum. And so that ruled out many automatically. And then of course, um, we were looking at those big box curriculums that were written for traditional classroom. And when my oldest, when we began homeschooling, my oldest was middle school age and we did try one of those out. And um, I mean, we're talking, it was like seven hours a day of schooling. So that was one thing we were personally looking to cut out was we just felt, I, I came, I finally just came to the realization that year that I was not trying to just do traditional school at home, that I was wanting to homeschool my children, have the time with my children. One of the main reasons I began homeschooling was um, realizing how much time I had given away to teachers to have my children's heart. And I wanted that back. And I was realizing I was, I wasn't really getting it still because they were still sitting there seven hours <laughs> with someone else um, or with other things. And so one thing for me was also just being able to um, have that curriculum that was written with the homeschool family in mind. And that's one of the major things I noticed just reading through the scheduling and the, the, the information in the front of the teachers, in front of the books themselves, just that course description and the teacher information. Many of us, I'm definitely was just as guilty. We like skip over that and we jump right to the to the schedule and the courses. Um, I started reading that in the front, just even there were some very, very particular challenges to me as the parent and what I was, what I was supposed to be accomplishing within the heart of my child and what the goal of the course was. And the, so that automatically drew me to master books. And then, um, for my children, it was they were very surprised that they had so many options as Christian, as Kristen mentioned, we don't just have, this is what you have to take. You're in this grade. This is it. We have different options. So when, when my, when my oldest came into that and she was like, you mean I actually get to have some say in this? <laughs> this? And so they love that every year. And even now, um, you know, these, 
I obviously limit like these are your options, but at least they have some options. <laughs> Whereas before they did not have options. It was, this is your grade. This is your grade kit. This is what you're supposed to take. I love that I can have that individualized education with my children, even at the high school level, because before I thought I could only have that in the lower levels, but I realized you, you within that course that you're going for college bound or whatever, sure, you have some limitations, but even within that master books gives us some options and we love that. Yeah, I think my would add to that is something Masterbooks offers, which is a little bit bold of a statement, but it's a faith builder guarantee that if the faith of your child doesn't grow as a result of using Masterbooks curriculum, we'll refund you. And the reason we can say that is because in scripture, we're told that the Bible, the word of God is powerful, living, um, active and capable of penetrating. And I know like some, sometimes we'd have issues when I was pastoring where the church would be, oh my goodness, this is going to be a big issue. I wouldn't speak on it. I would just pull out scripture and begin reading scripture. And by the end of the service, everybody knew exactly what the Holy Spirit meant in these issues. I didn't have to address it. We just did that and the work is there. And I think because master books has scripture interwoven everywhere. Like if you do the logic course, you can't possibly take our logic course without coming away with a full understanding of biblical authority, young youth creation, um, the fallacies and logic of not believing in truth and a creator and, you know, our life science origins course that will grow people's faith. Our world religions and cults will grow faith. Principles of mathematics will grow faith. Now with the, um, the Master Books Academy courses, like the, those instructors, Brian Young has taken our courses and upped it a notch. Like you can't, you can't take a course. He just finished paleontology, by the way. That's gonna be live in the next couple of days. Um, we also have a music theory course, which is, about to go live. I digress. But like, I get so excited because that's, you know, we, we send our kids to school sometimes and we tell them that they really don't need to, to, to believe everything that, that the Bible says, but we want them to have their faith. Master Books doesn't take that approach. It says, no, even math, where math is not void from God, like Kristen said, and, and language, language is a miracle. Like the, the, what God did to allow us to communicate with each other, not just verbally, but non-verbally into our brains and the way we're wired and, you know, all of these things like master books takes an approach that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has a plan for your life. God had purpose and intent when he created you. And I think that that's something that really stands out in the master books courses. Sometimes when we buy a company and we take on a project, it takes us a bit to kind of work out some of the, the bugs and, and to, to bring the master books into it. But I think we've done a stellar job of that. And um, I, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of energy that goes into making those courses uh, top notch. So um, yeah, I, I'm excited by the courses we have and the courses that are coming. Kate Loop's Algebra 2 course, one of the latest courses we put out, amazing. Uh, we have um, an astronomy course by Danny Faulkner, who is an astrophysicist, a creationist. Um, that is an advanced level course. Our astronomy course by Jason Lyle, like you cannot look at the universe and not believe there's a God. Uh, he is an amazing astrophysicist as well, who created the planetarium at the Arch or at the Creation Museum. Like we have, our education of philosophy is we start out a little bit gentler, um, allowing for the whole child approach. And by the time they get to high school, like these are legit solid courses where students are not just learning knowledge, they're gaining wisdom and they're actually um, developing a strong worldview. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we're very intentional. Our mission statement is ink on paper to touch eternity. And if we put a, a book out, we want to make sure that that book is going to have an eternal impact. And that's the last thing I would say. I talked about brand, but I would say that we want to teach our kids that 
Um, we, this, this life is very short and we are focusing, we are eternally minded that, that not just what we're doing here matters, but also, um, the eternity and, and that what goes on from here. So, um, we've gone on a bit. Do you guys have anything to close with? Just have one last question about our high school books. Uh, still talking directly to the student. Often they do. Keep in mind, though, that we have different formats for our courses. Some of them have a teacher guide and other books. And so they're more like real type books that you just would pull off your bookshelf with a teacher guide that asks questions and brings the course to life. In those types, they're not going to talk directly to the student well the teacher guide might but the other books are not but then other courses that we have um which i think is we have quite a few of those in high school that talk directly to the student so yes because our materials are written for homeschool families yes but every one of the courses we have is designed for independent learning um, it's not it's not required that a teacher sit and teach it. And now with the Master Books Academy, even if you're not comfortable with a concept, um, we're adding a lot of content. And like the world history, highly recommend. Summer did such a good job of doing a world history course, bringing in even more biblical content and making such a strong course. Kate has finished all of the maths. That's incredible. Um, I mean, I just, I think, where Master Books is headed uh, is really exciting. So, well, thank you, girls. We're still, for joining. Adding, we're still adding lots of courses. Yes. So, every year we release new, like we're working on forensics, we're working on astronomy. You know, you mentioned some of them. So, we're always adding new courses, even at the high school level. So, I just want to, you know, if there's something that we don't have, stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, well, thank you very much for joining me and everybody who participated in the, the webinar. And uh, hopefully this format is helpful. And I love being able to bring in different points of view and um, you guys' experience. So, uh, uh, awesome job. So, thank you, everyone.